Hello, this is Scott Norman from Pittsburgh State University, the Department of Automotive Technology, and this is another uh, case study on um, AC gauge analysis. Uh, we're working on a 2009 Kia Spectra, which the complaint is uh, it's not blowing cold air. So uh, this is a, uh, a TXV system in which uh, the shop is around 70 degrees and the uh, the vehicle is only blowing out um, around 59, 58 PSI, I'm sorry, 58, 59 uh, degrees uh, coming out of the center duct. Uh, right now, the uh, AC was turned off to measure the equalization time, and um, and so we're we're seeing that the equalization time on this TXV system is around uh, one minute, which is uh, way too fast for a TXV system. We'll let the clutch kick on here in a little bit. So we're turning the AC physically off and on. Um, on this gauge set. So so how I use these videos is that I use them as case studies in the classroom to where um, I turn the volume off and I let the students uh, watch the gauge and kind of we kind of talk through it as far as what we're seeing and then I have the uh, students um, uh, analyze uh, the gauges and use some critical thinking to try to figure out uh, what they think the problem is and then at the end of the video after they've discussed it for a while because they'll get into a debate on what they think the problem is and they'll give supporting evidence on why they think it is so it's kind of a fun activity but uh, of course at the end of the activity uh, we'll, we will uh, tell them what the problem is and again this is before I, I send them out to the vehicles to have them actually diagnose vehicles themselves so I was just trying to get them uh, used to looking at gauges and uh, trying to figure out uh, what's going on with them by using some type of um, maybe uh, gauge diagnostic charts. So when the AC is on, right now the AC is on right now, the, uh, the, the, uh, the low side gauge is reading high, around 40 PSI, and the high side is reading low, around 100 PSI. So, so low side is high and high side is low. And when you see gauge readings like this, it's typically um, one out of two problems. It's either a weak compressor, bad compressor, or it is a, um, a TXV that is, um, is stuck open. Uh, it is not restricting. And so um, normally when a technician sees this, because they see these gauge readings a lot of the times, uh, they'll, they'll determine or, or, or they'll assume that it is a, um, a bad compressor. It's what it is. And so the easy way to um, tell the difference between a bad compressor and a stuck open TXV is that you turn the um, the uh, AC off and you uh, check the equalization time, the time that it takes the uh, low side and high side to equalize to each other, which on a TXV system, when you turn the AC system off, the TXV should close. And when it does, the um, the equalization time should um, should uh, take very long. So, so right now we just turn the AC off and uh, you're seeing equalization time happening right now. And it's happening in about a minute, which is way too fast. So, so, so that's helping um, confirm uh, that hey, the, the TXV uh, can't close, it can't move, it's stuck uh, uh, at 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 an open type of scenario. And so, I also talk to my students about the rule of two. That they're typically, I'm looking for two pieces of evidence that that help support diagnostics. So, so the first piece of evidence is the um, it's the gauge readings. Low side is reading high, high side is reading low, so that's indicating a possible TXV problem. The second piece of evidence is doing this equalization test, and the equalization test is happening very quickly. Again, on a TXV system, typically it'll take uh, at the, the fastest TXVs, maybe three to five minutes, the slowest ones, maybe 30 minutes. So I say anywhere between three minutes and, and, uh, and uh, 30 minutes. And so most systems take you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to equalize. And so, uh, again, this is uh, equalizing uh, very fast. So we're going to watch the um, the AC kick back on here just a little bit. Uh, the other thing you could do then to try to determine uh, if, the, if the TXV is stuck, in this case it is, is that um, is that you could spray a CO2 or a super cold substance on the uh, power dome of the um, TXV and, and then see if it's closed. So, so we're actually doing that right now. Yeah. 
and those gauge readings should drop. So normally when I do this on a good TXV system, it'll go from 40 PSI to like 20 or maybe 10 or even maybe a zero sometimes. So so this is definitely 100% uh, uh, diagnosed as a, as a TXV that is not moving.